the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fully 
trained and equipped and empowered followers of God. And, that, and that's how the commission gets to us, right? Because I, I wasn't there. I wasn't one of the 11. Um, but the 11 taught people to obey everything that Jesus commanded them, including this. And then those people who were taught by the 11 taught people. And then and eventually it gets to us. And so we're all carrying forth this, like, this discipleship, this go forth into all nations, baptizing them, which, you know, we literally have a sacrament of baptism. That also means just immersing them, just like covering them in the essence, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And don't forget, through all of it, you're going to have divine help. Right? I'm going to be with you. I, I, I Jesus, I'm not abandoning you. I'm with you to the end of the age. Um, but, you know, it's better if you do it. That's what he says. So that's like, that's the whole thing. That's like why we do everything that we do. Like if, if you ask us why we are trying to figure out how to get rid of the dead tree out in the front of the property, like the answer to that eventually, uh, you know, if I had my coffee, which some people have noticed, yes, I had a, I had a quad today. <laughs> I had some extra shots. Um, but, uh, but the reason we're getting rid of that trade is because we want to create a more welcoming, safe environment um, to engage more people because that's part of the whole thing we're trying to do here, which is to make disciples of all nations and, and help everybody from everywhere to get on the team that is bringing about that show it's bringing about that global righteousness and justice. And it's not just about what we think, it's about what we do. And that is so huge. That is such a big mission. That's, I, I, like, I do not expect that it's going to be done tomorrow. At some point, Jesus is going to come. He's going to finish it. I don't know when that will happen. But, like, there's just a lot of work to do. There's a lot of trees to cut down. There's a lot of trees to plant. There's a lot of, of food banks to start. There's, there's just a lot of people that need to hear the story. There, there's a lot. And it can be overwhelming. And, and I, can, I can stand here and I can say, yeah, hey, we as a church, we need to not just exist to be a social club. We need to not just exist because, like, we like it and we have these traditions and we're trying to keep doing the traditions because they're familiar to us and not scary. But, like, we need to exist to fulfill the Great Commission. And, and you can say, yeah, Ryan, that sounds, like, really prophetic. That sounds really like a hard, something a hardcore preacher would say, challenge me. But how? Like, what does that mean when the rubber meets the road? What's, what does that look like? Um, and my answer to what that looks like for us um, is, is this guy right it, this is, go ahead and put it on the screen. I, it's in the slideshow. I know, I, I'm surprised on the screen people. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, so, this is, if you look down at the bottom, I've got like a biblical, I've got to move the cross so you can see the biblical <laughs> basis. Um, but um, I, I've got like, these are Bible verses that talk about like how churches grow, right? Like what's, What's the nuts and bolts, the step-by-step -step process that it takes from the very beginning to the very end of, like, what it looks like for a church to be healthy? Because healthy things grow, amen? If, if you've got, you know, a healthy baby, it's going to grow. If you've got a healthy plant, it's going to grow. If you've got healthy cancer cells, it's going to grow. Not only good things grow, sometimes bad things grow, but if they're healthy, they grow. Right? And so... How, how do we be healthy? And then how does this happen? And my intention, I mean, this is, I, I made this up, right? Like, I, I observed things in the Bible and in this particular format. This is Ryan in white spaces, this phrasing and stuff. But it's, it's my goal, and it's going to get bigger in a minute. If you're squinting to try to see it, and I can print out copies for you, it's all. It'll, I, I just, I want you to see the general, like, there is a five-step plan that's, like, concrete. My idea with this is that this is not unique. This is what everybody's going to tell you. Um, and if you go, if you buy Andy Stanley's book, 
you know, he's got a big mega church in Georgia somewhere, I think. Or if you talk to Rick Warren, uh, he's got a purpose driven church, which is the, the church version of the purpose driven life. If, whatever they tell you about how churches grow, it's mostly going to like assume that you're down in step four. You're, you're never going to hear some church growth expert say, oh, yeah, you know, here's how to do a Facebook marketing campaign and be able to say to them, great, I'm excited about this Facebook marketing campaign. Will this Facebook marketing campaign work instead of people at the church praying? Like, if people at the church don't pray and, and don't want new people to come, uh, will the Facebook marketing campaign make up for that? They're going to say, of course not. That's ridiculous. Okay, oh, like, oh, absolutely. You, like, people need to be praying. And, and people need to be open and, and public about their faith in Jesus Christ. That's step two. And, and people need to be willing to invite others, and they need to be willing when they when other people do invite others to like make new friends, to to actually like welcome them. If you've got a clique and it's like, hey, <laughs> you know, this is our group. We like, you know, the 15 of us, we all like each other, we don't know about you. There's not really a space for you, that's not gonna work. None of the other stuff, none of the other. So so I don't want you to think that I'm like selling you a brand with this. This is free. Right? Um, you can have it, uh, but it's also, this isn't like how I think churches should grow. This is how every church everywhere has always grown. And this is just one like phrasing of it. And, and the reason we grow is that it says it right down there. It's super tiny. I know. We're going to make it bigger. Um, it's because of Matthew 28. It's because of the Great Commission. Because we are Working to involve everyone. And, and working to include everyone in the whole world. And so if our if our congregation, John Wesley, it's not very Presbyterian to put John Wesley is it? He started the Methodist Church. John Wesley used to say, uh, the world is my parish. Right? That St. John's Presbyterian Church doesn't necessarily exist to bless you people, but rather it exists for you people to bless South Austin, Utah, Kyle, greater community. That's our parish. That's our, that's why we exist. That's who we're here for, is, is all the people who aren't here. You guys are the leaders. You guys are the ones that are like in charge of bringing that blessing. That's why we read Genesis 12, right? God said to Abraham, who was like the first person that God kind of started this process with, the covenant passed down to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, out into Moses, to King David, and on to Jesus. It, I'll bless you so that you can be a blessing. And all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. And those are words that God said to Abraham, God wants to say to you right now. Amen? You with me on this? A little bit there. That, that was like a scary amen, that way. <laughs> All right. See where I'm not sure I like it. It's a little scary. All right. Good. Let's go to the next slide. We'll, we'll vivify. All right. So it helps to focus. And and here's the thing. At the beginning of the year, I started you with prayer. And and we talked for like multiple weeks about hey, I I, I want to challenge you to pray. And I I don't want you to just pray for what you want. I don't just want you to pray. Uh, like you can pray that your diet will work. You can pray that, that God will buy you Mercedes Benz. Those are, those are things to ask for. God might say no, but, but you can pray for it. Um, but I also want you to learn to pray for the things that God wants, not just the things you want. And specifically, and you know, this is, this is the, uh, the best practices. This isn't in the Bible, that you have to pray for two or more people. Um, but my experience with churches, it, it is in the Bible that you need to pray, and you need to pray for, for the things God wants. You need to pray for the mission of God, right? That's going to be good for you. Um, and, and the nuts and bolts, because people like breadcrumbs, is I want to challenge you to pray every day for at least two people, two or more people. Two is a good number, really. You can pray for as many people as you want, but like, I would, I would pick two specifically to be like your two, so you know who your two are. Besides your family, so again, you can pray for your family, 
Um, but, but pray for two people besides your family who need to come to church, need to know Jesus. And, and we're not going to play games. We're not going to do the, oh, well, they say they're a Christian, but I don't know if they're really. Just pray for them. It's just, just when in doubt, you know, it's, it, the, the goal is not to, like, be the, the eternal judge. The goal is to say, hey, these people need more Jesus in their lives. These people, uh, uh, God, I, I know you have a heart for those people. I want to pray that you would send someone to reach these people that are in my life. And I'm going to pray. They're going to be one of my two. And what I said was that if you start to do that, then some of the stuff further down on the list is going to seem a lot more approachable. And you know what happened? Literally, we're talking about this year, folks. Like we're seeing miracles in front of our eyes. All right? You did it. You, you like listened to the things that the preacher said, and, and some of y'all started praying. I can tell. Like, I. I the warmth in this room, like there's more prayer, there's a different kind of prayer that's going on in this community, and it's making a difference. I, I, like, and part of that difference is that those of you who've begun to pray, and again, you know, this isn't, it's not like first step. First step, go out and like talk to strangers about Jesus, right? No, first step is pray. Privacy or your own home. I don't even know if you've done it or not. But start to pray for the things God wants. Start to pray, thy kingdom come, not my kingdom come. And now, I feel like y'all are ready for step two, which is communication. Um, I, I phrase it, be open and public about your commitment to Jesus and practice talking about what you believe with others. You see that word practice? Practice is important, but, but that means that like you could be doing it with with other people in the pew with you, right? I'm, I'm not asking you. Step two is not um, find the angriest, atheist college professor you can and engage him in debate and win him over to Jesus Christ, all right? Newsboys may not be happy that I'm not telling you to do that, but I'm not telling you to do that. <laughs> um, what I want you to do is to to realize that even though, that, that some of us have learned a bad habit, um, and we've learned to make our faith and our Christianity this like very private thing, and this like secret, like, like only the Census Bureau will know that I trust in Jesus, <laughs> right? Um, and that's not how it has to be. Like you, it's, it actually can be a thing that affects every aspect of your life. It actually can be a thing that, like, people can know about you and not in a creepy way, right? Like, you don't have to have to be obnoxious and tell the person making your Subway sandwich, like, yeah, I like pickles, and do you know you're a sinner? In order to be able to, like, communicate that you are, in fact, at Subway, I think one of the best ways that, I, I've said this before, they shall know ye are Christians by your tips. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, show love. Show generosity. Show that your God is not the almighty dollar, but your God is Jesus Christ. And when people ask you about it, which they will, uh, you're ready to answer. And, and here's what's going to happen if you practice. If, if you get ready to answer, if you know what you believe, why you believe it, and if you if you can articulate like, which is a hard question, right? Like, what is the gospel? What is wh why are you? Wh why do you trust in Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? And there are lots of good answers to that question. There are some bad answers to that question, but there are a lot. There are multiple good answers to that question. And if you know one of them, if you know one of those good answers that's that's true for you. Um, a miracle is going to happen. I promise. Well, it, it, the same thing as prayer. When you're ready to communicate your faith to other people, God's going to start putting people in front of you who, who need your faith communicated to them. And, and he's going to give you the kind of people that, that only you make sense to. Right? God, God gives me a lot of the war game nerds and the movie geeks. Right? Because of who I am. 
But there's, there's people who, if I articulate my faith, they're going to be like, that's a lot of big words, and you're a massive nerd, and I think you might have Asperger's, right? But if you talk to those people, it's going to make sense. And so, um, so that's step two. And, and if you haven't done step one yet, and step two seems scary, well, that's because you haven't done step one yet, right? So, so try step one. And if you have done step one, and you're like, all right, but let's get a move on here, because, you know, we, we've got a budget to meet, and we're, I, I, again, going back to announcements, we are running a deficit budget. You know that, right? St. John's, our budget is public. Um, we, we have uh, money in the bank, we have a, a fund, an endowment, um, but we are dipping into that endowment at a rate of about $60,000 every year, um, and we're going to run out of it, and then we're gonna be borrowing money. Um, and so, uh, like, we gotta do something, and we know that, um, but, but, and this is the remember why thing, so, so, I bring that up to say, hey, if you're, if you're at that point, you're like, well, it's great that I've been praying, but like, I want to do more, I'm ready. Here's more, right? You, you want to do more, come up to me and say, hey, Ryan, I just want to talk to you about why I believe in Jesus. I'm going to say, great, yeah, I'll, I'll listen, I'll, you know, give, give me your elevator speech, give me your, you know, or, or hammer, sometimes people are just external processors, and I just need to, you know, talk things out to know what they really think about things. Yeah, do it. And do it with your friends, too. But be ready to be public. Be ready to be out of the closet. I actually think there's a lot we can learn about how to be Christians from the LGBTQ community. Um, right? That's, it, it, they, and one of the things is that they, they know how to be who, who they are in front of people. Right? They know how to live out loud. And, and we were meant to live out loud. But in some ways, we, we stopped, and the LGBTQ community started, and we need to, we need to learn that back from them. Um, that's communication. Now, I, I want to go back to this budget, because now I've kind of opened up a, <laughs> a brief hole in this sermon. Y'all, money's not God. This church is not going to close because we run out of money. I'm going to say that again. This church is not going to close because we run out of money. If this church closes, it will be because we failed to be faithful to the Great Commission. God is the boss, not the money. And if we are a church that fulfills the Great Commission, that is, yeah, thank you, that is making disciples of every tribe, tongue, and nation, that is, is reaching people, um, and that is teaching those people to, to reach other people, and not just to reach other people, but to create, uh, to fight world suck, <laughs> and, and create awesome, and, and do the things that God wants to do. God won't let us close. God will, you know, God will say, no, you, you can't retire, I'm not done with you, and the money will arrive, right? If, if we are doing the things that God made churches to do, then we have supernatural help. Jesus will be with us always to the end of the age. If this church, and, and I'm going to be real with y'all, in the past we haven't, it allows ourselves to become a distraction from the Great Commission. If, if St. John's Presbyterian Church becomes something to do instead of working towards the mission of God, and we start working towards the mission of St. John's Presbyterian Church, which is just to exist for its own sake, not for Jesus' sake, um, just to exist for, for each other, then we will close. I don't care how much money there is. There are plenty of churches in the world that are sitting on more expensive land than us, with bigger bank accounts than us, that are going to close. They are failing. And the reason they're failing is because they're not doing the things that churches are for. <laughs> and there are plenty of churches that are starting right now, that are starting this week, deep in debt. They've taken out massive loans. They don't own a building. But they've got a couple of people, and those people are committed to fulfilling the Great Commission, and many of those churches are going to succeed. 
and, and grow astronomically because they are doing the thing that Jesus said to do. And, and, and that is the reason why. That is the end, that, that is the answer to ecclesiology. Now, ecclesiology is not everything. Ecclesiology means church, churchology, church, study of church, right? Church isn't everything. There's matters of salvation and the glory of God and biblical studies also exist. But like as far as like what churches are for, that's that's the answer to every question. Is to make disciples of all nations. And disciples doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean converts, doesn't mean religious adherence, it means people who act like Jesus. Are we making more people act like Jesus? Are we making more people more Christ-like? If we are, the money's gonna come. If if we don't, the money's gonna disappear. It's not about money. The money is subservient to Jesus Christ. Can I get a more enthusiastic amen on that one? Amen. 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 All right.